Hello again and welcome to Pearl Magazine. As the population ages, demand will increase for death care services. The global market is expected to grow. Zelichin visited a trade show to learn about the newest trends in death care, such as cardboard coffins. At the Asia Funeral and Cemetery Expo held at the Wan Chai Convention Center, exhibitors are showcasing elaborately engraved caskets, a holographic video of a beloved cat, and an LED display in front of a columbarium. Over at this booth, this woman is trying out a cardboard coffin. We really want to create a truly environment-friendly product. So with even the inks that we use to print the designs is um, tested and proven as environment friendly. We don't have any metal hinges, metal hinges. It's all made up of cardboard and paper. So it, it is actually made of high grade uh, corrugated board. Carl Consulta and his business partner spent many years developing the product and they started the cardboard coffin manufacturing business in Singapore last year. So this cardboard coffin, is it sturdy enough for a person? It is actually. Um, we injured it well, so it can hold up around 250 kg of weight. 250 kg, that's yeah. quite a lot actually. It is, it is. And you have these um, interesting designs on here. What's the purpose of that? Well, for this design, this is more quite popular for Taoist clients. Okay. Because they want the crane as a symbol. Um, we also have uh, other designs that caters to different religions. Uh, we also have something for the Hindu uh, groups. Um, this, is, uh, this is the Mount Kailash, which is a holy mountain for the Hindus. How is a cardboard coffin different from a wooden coffin? If you use a wooden coffin, maybe we can think that you're cutting one tree. If you use our cardboard coffin, you're just using just a portion of the tree. Okay, So it uses less wood. Okay, because this is processed wood, it's a cardboard. The price of a cardboard coffin is about the same as a wooden coffin. And the best-selling coffin has new designs. Uh, a lot of people actually want it, wants the simplicity of the, the coffin. And then um, the usual uh, uh, practices we see is they allow people to write on the coffin. That makes it more meaningful for them. One of the business partners owns a funeral home and about five out of 10 funerals a week will use a cardboard coffin. There's really a lot of movement towards environment friendliness, sustainability, and people are very conscious uh, on these things. And we see that the new generation now, the younger generation are, can easily accept this kind of product. The company is showing their products for the first time to distributors from around the world at this exhibition. Most of countries like South Africa, they say, hey, we don't have this product in our country. In Brazil also, they say, yeah, uh, this, this is brilliant. This is very innovative because they're still stuck with the usual uh, caskets that they have there for many, many years. We have been uh, doing deals now on different countries all throughout Asia and also in, in the U.S. and, and you know, uh, in the Europe. Kenny Lowe, the event organizer, says people wanting environmentally friendly products is a new trend in the industry. Well, this industry, the traditional one, they are consuming quite a lot of woods, also emit carbon dioxide during the, the, the burning or everything. It, it takes more time to burn the casket. So they are making some products that can save the energy, save the environment. The exposition was suspended during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is the first time the trade show has been held since 2019. There are 115 exhibitors and 2,700 buyers from almost 40 regions, representing funeral homes, industry associations, and wholesalers. This industry is quite special. Before, they don't have a platform for exchanging ideas, trading, communicating, gathering. So we created this platform in 2008. And uh, this platform served as a, a good occasion for the industry in Asia and also around the world to communicate each other. 
Another trend affecting the age-old industry is an influx of technology. IT and social media is getting into the life of everyone. So uh, the service providers, the cemetery, they have to consider uh, make use of the social media. They have to incorporate some IT elements uh, into the uh, service or into the products, like the uh, live streaming uh, service, online service, and also they even use the IT technology such as AI in the uh, uh, service. This is what's called a digital cemetery. You place the ashes of your loved one inside an urn, inside this niche. And there's an LED screen in the front that shows a video of your loved one. This is popular in mainland China to save on land. More technology solutions were on display at the expo. This exhibitor from Taiwan is showcasing what's called a digital memorial. So this is a keepsake, uh, belongs to your family or friends. And then when they come to the columbarium, which is somewhere you store ash, and then now today we are coming to visit Richard by tapping this keepsake onto the machine. And then we find Richard on the spot and it automatically triggers the memorial content. And he gave all this information to you. Yeah, and I think that's what's really important is because if you encourage customers to do this in life, Assuming you have the pre-arrangement, um, you know, in their 40s, 50s, yes. then they will still have 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to put all the rich content in there. So, yeah. And then so from here, you'll be able to see the biography turn into obituary and the timeline of this, of Richard's life. Jess Chang founded the technology startup two years ago. She saw a market opportunity for digital memorials as people become more tech savvy. We know that in this generation, um, the, all the digitalization, how people um, start to um, you know, curate their content and by attending funerals and uh, sharing the stories, um, there is a huge opportunity um, for people to want something else and more creative, um, simplified way to start recording their life stories. Jess thinks there's a lot of potential for her product in Asia. As a place where people culturally really care about, you know, the last miles preparation and the willingness to invest in, you know, what the funeral will look like. So we think this is a really big opportunity and to come here and then showcase uh, to the Asian countries. At this trade show, Jess is looking to build partnerships with funeral parlors and cemeteries, which would sell her product directly to the end user. The company is speaking to potential clients from China, Africa, and Australia. We've got people kind of already asking for pricings and um, um, the next steps that we aren't just a software and hardware provider. So what we do is we kind of carefully listen to what the operation needs and the business goals, and then we put this all together. And um, yeah, we said we'll come back to them with like a fuller plan. Mandy Yip is a second generation running a Hong Kong-based casket wholesale business. Her clients want her to develop new products every few years. Sometimes when the retail store, they sell the products a long time, they will ask me to find a new product. So they, they need some refreshing. Some of the customer will ask them, oh, do you have another kind of the caskets or coffins? Okay, so Mandy, what is this new product line you're introducing at the exhibition? Um, our new product line names We Care, which means we care what you think, what you need. Um, this is a uh, new product that we match the casket, the flower casket, match the tombstone for the flowers. Usually the coffin and the tombstone are separate items. Yes, they sell it on the separate, uh, separate way. Uh, the, the old way is they sell the casket after the uh, ceremony, they come back to, uh, to sell another, they sell the tombstone. 
Mandy says the trade show participants have responded positively to her new product. Oh, they, they were so excited and um, they would love to have the new way to promote to their customers, not that the old traditional. They also have the new generation style for them, so they can sell it in, a, uh, in one way. So they can sell Cascade also earns and also the toothstone at the same time. And because young people like to own pets in recent years, coffins for fur babies are popular. Actually, this design is from Taiwan, so we take their design and uh, sell it in Hong Kong. They, they can put a lot of things inside for their pets, their dogs, toys inside, and also in a fancy way. It's not that um, the traditional wood. She says revenues have dropped by 5% compared with 2022 during the COVID-19 pandemic. People of long-term illness will, uh, already passed away. After the COVID, these two years, um, there will be less people to, to pass. But the industry is expected to grow in the long term because of the rapidly aging population. By 2028, 25% of Hong Kong residents will be over 65 years old, and the demand for death care services and products will increase. This is something that everybody leads to the surface. So I think that the, for the development or the future of this industry is more on the human side, in considering the, the, the family needs and how to get incorporated with the technology the trend, the eco-friendly uh, uh, development. So all these kind of services, as well as the products, they will uh, going in this direction. When we come back, a look at how climbing high can offer satisfaction and success. Stay with us. Welcome back to Parole Magazine. While some people have a fear of heights, others, like professional climbers, actually enjoy the view up there. But the challenge is not for the faint of heart. It requires skill, determination, and courage as well. Thirty-eight-year-old Mike Yu started rock climbing when he was in secondary school. He took some climbing courses and later worked as an assistant instructor while getting his coaching certificate. He said climbing gives him a strong sense of achievement. Our natural instinct tells us to grip with our hands, but when I must step on a tiny object with my toes and then push up with force, it is difficult. When I fall, I will climb again. I feel Hong Kongers can always find a solution to solve problems. In 2022, Mike started his own business, setting up an indoor rock climbing gym, but it closed during COVID. When the border reopened, people ended up going north for shopping. So Mike has experienced a few ups and downs over the past few years. The most difficult thing is how I can pay the rent. When the border is reopened, many go to other places for shopping, eating. So I have less customers. Angus met Mike seven years ago at an adventure activity. Angus comes to Mike's rock climbing gym regularly. He believes Mike will get through the hard times as he sees Mike's passion when teaching young kids. Rock climbing is gaining popularity in Hong Kong. Mike is now promoting this kind of sport. And he's also making efforts to train children. Mike 
I still want to use this venue at this moment. Hong Kong people keep evolving and find our way. Tree climber Jason Ma is aiming to go higher. He recently went to Malaysia to take part in the 2024 Asia Pacific Tree Climbing Championship. Jason is the first Asian to enter the Masters competition, placing fifth in the overall preliminary ranking. The three awards are the recognition of my achievement. It is also a recognition for Asians' achievement. I was so emotional when I won because my competitors were highly ranked in the World's Championship. I was so surprised. Despite the success, Jason has also experienced failure over the past 10 years. With his wife Yan Yi's support, Jason kept climbing up his career ladder. In the past 10 plus years, he's so devoted in this. I admire the spirit and passion and his perseverance. With his family's support, Jason kept pushing for newer heights. He prepared for the Chung Chao Bun Tower climbing competition after he came back from Malaysia. As a first-timer in this competition, he joined his friend Mike and former Hong Kong sports climbing athlete Angel Wong to practice for the climbing ahead of the competition. Angel is very experienced. She has experience as a six-time winner. Mike used to be a master of ceremonies, but I have never seen this competition in person, so I don't know what to do. He is an extraordinary tree climber. He also followed us to train the climbing speed. He just need to be himself. I think he could be faster. The atmosphere whether that will affect you will depend on whether you can keep calm. Oh, he must win. If not, don't come back to see us. Jason and his friend Lung Wan Chung participated in this year's Cheng Chao Bun Festival competition. They stayed in Cheng Chao all day to prepare for the final. Now we're having dinner. As a local custom, we're trying this bun. The competition is held at night time and it's difficult to adjust. So I sleep during the break. Jason placed first to qualify for the final. However, he didn't perform well in the three-minute final. Before the competition, I read a verse saying success depends on the process. In the past, I was concerned about the result. But after this competition, I felt that I have already tried my best. I made so much effort preparing for this. Finally, it's done. Yes, I really made it. 
I think it's not easy to succeed or get the first prize. Only those who made a huge effort deserve the prize. I really admire these other participants. The process is the most important for our growth and what we have learned is more valuable than the prize. Actually, after I came down, I felt it's a breakthrough for me. Many people's dream is to climb high and see the world. For professional climbers, their success depends not only on overcoming fear, but also uncertainty and the need to persevere. As long as you are persistent, you will solve the problems, and definitely you will be on top of the world. Hong Kong people are famous for the Lion's Rock spirit. With this spirit, we have a passion for tree climbing. That's our show for this week. Join us on Pearl Magazine, same time next week. Bye for now.